Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being patient with me. Uh, I have a review for you of Spartacus Vengeance Episode 9, Monsters. Now, in that episode, it starts out very weirdly. You see the Romans coming to attack uh, Spartacus and his group at the temple. Uh, what it actually turns out to be is Crixus, Gannicus, and Spartacus doing a basic kind of Romans fire drill for the people at the temple, basically letting them know straight up, look, when the Romans are coming, you've got to be ready. You cannot be unprepared. And it's an issue that you're unprepared now. So we need to start training even harder for the eventual coming of the Romans. After that happens, what basically ends up happening next is you see Sepia out at the pool, uh, kind of having one of those sleepless night deals, and she talks to Glebier and says, hey, I'm having trouble with the things going on in my life, and he, of course, is like, oh, my sweet, I love you so much, and they end up in a make-out session with her boob hanging out, as usual. Um, they're basically the perfect couple, because they've all, both suffered um, at the hands of bad people. Uh, so while their make-out session is going on, guess who comes to the door? Alithia! Com coming back from the dead, uh, basically, uh, in Glaber's opinion. Uh, and it really messes up his plans, because he was really digging Sepia. Um, uh, and here's the deal. When Alithia comes back and bursts the door, they're all freaking out because they're like, Where's she been? She's probably got captured by Spartacus' group, so maybe she knows where Spartacus is. What that leads to is, uh, you know, Glaber forcing his wife to go back to the spot where she was basically captured and trying to basically pinpoint where Spartacus and his group are. Um, basically, what ends up happening next is that um, after that, Spartacus has a a conversation with Mira about not being romantically involved anymore basically breaks Mira's heart a little bit um and there's a problem with that because I really liked Mira with Spartacus I really thought Mira became stronger as a person and stronger as a character when she was uh, romantically involved with Spartacus now that Spartacus is um you know not going to date her anymore um that that is going to really force uh, Spartacus to you know go on his own. I think it's part of Spartacus not really knowing how to deal with his emotions about his dead wife and knowing that he has an attraction to Mira. Um, but they totally completely break up and it's really really sad. Um, so basically, the next thing that happens is Alithia goes back. To the landscape where she was captured, Lucretia talks to her and is overjoyed that, you know, Alithia survived. Then basically tells Alithia, we've got to figure out a way to break up Sepia and, um, and, um, Glabier. But she also tells, uh, Alithia that, hey, um, you, you bore, uh, Spartacus' child. Um, and, so basically what ends up happening next is that Lucretia goes to Sepia and says, Hey, Glavier killed your brother. Um, that's a problem for you, isn't it? And she's like, yeah, it really kind of is. I'm angry about that. I want to kill Glavier. And she's like, oh, you should really totally go ahead with that plan. So, of course, you know, Glavier is relaxing by the pool. And, you know, Sepia comes up to try and attack him. And uh, even though... Alithia was angry at her husband for, you know, cheating on her with Sepia, the younger version of her, I guess. Uh, she basically slices Sepia's throat, and Sepia's dead in a pool of blood. And it's the most awesome thing that happened in the show. Now, credit, I liked Sepia. I really loved Sepia as a character, because, you know, she was this innocent, naive chick who you knew had a bit of a dark side, but you didn't know how it was going to be unleashed. And when her brother died, I was like, she could become a really powerful person. Nope, she's just Glabier's tool, and she had to die. So then after, you know, Sepia dies, 
Alithia and Glavier have a, a, a sex scene together, and that's the end of that. Um, Glavier and Asher basically figure out where Spartacus' camp is, and just like in the opener, they assault it. This time, though, you know, most of Spartacus' soldiers are ready, and they have a good big fight before, you know, Spartacus' group is forced to retreat. And, um, basically, well, what he does is says, the only way we're going to be able to stay free is if we take labor down, and that's the basic war cry for the end of the episode. Now, overall, I did like this episode. I liked the way the characters functioned with each other. I, I liked um, the whole death of Sepia. I thought the plan was well executed. I still don't know what Lucretia's whole end game is. I want to know what her deal is. What is she trying to do in terms of gaining power? What What's her deal? I don't know what that is yet. Um, uh, Alithia must not be pleased at all that, you know, she's having Spartacus's baby. But I don't know how that's going to affect her in the future, other than the fact that she's going to have Spartacus's son. Does that mean, you know, that she's going to align herself with Spartacus since she found out that Spartacus was right? I don't know. That's all up in the air, too. Um, I really want Asher to die this season. Somebody kill him. I want it to happen. I want him dead, but it's probably not going to happen. Um... But, you know, I'm ready to see how Spartacus' group responds to having their second home destroyed. Um, you know, I want to see where they're going to go next. How they're going to fight off um, the Romans for what would seem like the seventh time in, in three seasons. Um, let me know what you guys think of the episode in the comments below. I personally loved it. I hope you guys did too. Until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!